Welcome to today's dance showcase. Austin. Uh, no, de definitely not gonna dance, but it's the film and TV showcase. Uh, I've been practicing my crumpeting. Crumpeting? You, yeah. you mean you mean crumping, right? Uh, no, no, no. I'm talking about the perfect amount of butter and the perfect amount of jam. That perfect <laughs> combination. That okay. hot steam rising. Oh my gosh, that sounds delicious. But but please, let's get it back to the film and TV. Be sure you looking for crazy out of our such a uh, pretty intense season. I think worldwide, wherever you're watching from, I think you can uh, agree that this has been a very interesting season that we found ourselves in in 2020. But our students across the film and TV intake and stream have put together some amazing work that they've worked tirelessly to show you today. So let's go first to our first year, first semesters, Jack and Ziana, as they introduce their intake. Enjoy the show. Jack, how great was Robin Austin? I know, they're the best. I'm looking forward to checking out these films from some amazing people and some lifelong friends that I've made along the way. It's just, it's great to be a part of. Yeah, and not only that, it's been amazing to learn from their creativity and be able to witness it firsthand. Definitely, yeah. let's check out those films. Hi, my name's Jack, and you're about to watch a short film that I made about a married couple's first romantic day in lockdown. Hope you enjoy. Not just for a week or two, that we keep doing them month after month after month uh, to ensure that we can all get through this together. So, what are we gonna do on lockdown? We could get a pet. We could spend time in the garden. Wanna clean the garden? Go on a romantic walk. I'm gonna make you a nice dinner. Do you wanna watch a chick flick? So what do you wanna to do tomorrow? We'll think of something. Everybody. Uh, my name is Angelique. I hope this story may encourage you to never stop chasing your dream and you should be proud of yourself. Enjoy. Baby, I want to check. Chloe, do you want to become a doctor? Yes. Good job. Daddy is so proud of you, Chloe. This daddy, a, a, a big cuddle, please. Mm. Mm. I love you, Chloe. I love you, Mommy. I made it, Dad. Are you proud of me? Hey guys, uh, my name's Peter. Thanks for this opportunity to uh, show you guys my film. I uh, hope you enjoy it. Yep, what are we doing? I'm gonna go prune some plants. Go get ready and I'll meet you outside. Cool, okay. So mum, why do we prune plants? 
Well, plants are like us. They're given a purpose according to their gardener. Just like those trees go tall and strong, plants need to be cut back so they can produce flowers and fruit. Does that make God our gardener? Yeah, it sure does. Just like a gardener loves his plants, God loves his people. And when we receive God's love, we grow strong and healthy. And how beautiful it is when we fulfill our purpose, just like this lavender. How about we take these inside? Wow, thanks Iana and Jack for introducing the first first. Those films were so good. Yeah, we're introducing our intake. This is May, really amazing. I'm Sam and we're introducing the first seconds. Yeah, this whole first year has gone so fast. This semester we actually had to make two videos, a three to five minute short narrative, but also a testimony video. Yeah, and you never stop learning. You never stop having fun, that's for sure. And uh, let's check out what we made. Hi everyone, this is Aggie and I'm a first year second semester student. So now you're about to watch a short film which portrays the story of a young couple in their quarantine season. So sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoy. <laughs>
When will this quarantine end? Some water? Yeah. Okay. <sighs> I'm so sick of the same routine every single day. I made you some pasta because you haven't eaten all day. Mm -hmm. Let's eat together. But at least I get to spend it with someone I love. That's all that matters. Hi everyone, my name is Hector. I'm a first second and you're gonna be watching my short film, The Early Bird, uh, which has been inspired by TikTok and conversations with my girlfriend. So I hope you guys enjoy. Wow, you really suck at this game. When? When what? When did I ask? Good one. Thank you. You know, I really missed you. I'm so glad you're home. I feel like we haven't talked in a while. I know, right? I miss you. What have you been up to? Nothing much. Nothing much. Hey, have you seen that one TikTok where the person asked their boyfriend if they were a worm, but they still love them? Yeah, what about it? Well, I was thinking if I was a worm, would you still love me? Yeah, why wouldn't I? Really? Like you'd take me out of places and like we just hang out? Duh. Bet. What should we do now that the quarantine ends tomorrow? <sighs> I really wanted to skate, you know? And maybe we could go out and get coffee. Yeah, we can totally do that tomorrow. Hey Jennifer, ready to get coffee? Jennifer. No, for worm. You're a gawk? Dream? Wait, it's just a dream. It's a dream. Okay, cool. We'll just do everything as normal. Yeah? Cool. Let's go. day today. I can't really tell if you enjoyed though. I'll take that as a yes. Are you sure you want to do this? Come on. Yeah, it's like a few weeks. That's all I want to I didn't expect you to be home so early. 
So you're telling me I've been hanging out with a gummy worm all day long? Hey guys, my name is Emmy, and the next film is about the pursuit of creativity. It's called Let's Make Art. Hope you enjoy. I'm not living. Why? What do you mean? I'm just, I overthink everything and I need to wake up and I need to start, start doing something. Okay. Like what? I think, I think I just need to create. Create what? I don't know, man. Art. Man, let's make art. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Erina, this is Toby. 
And weren't May and Sam so incredible? Their whole intake works so hard on all of their films and documentaries. And I think it really shows, doesn't it? A hundred percent. What's something that you learned this semester? Something that I learned this semester? Uh, I learned how to eat copious amounts of Vegemite scrolls and watch so, so many TikToks. One of those were an in-class assessment. Yes, definitely. I learned how to do a documentary and finish it. So... Finish it? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I know what that feels like. You don't, but... Anyway, we should turn to the screens 100%. and, uh, yeah, watch, watch our documentaries. Hi, my name is Vidalia. Thank you so much for tuning in. You'll be watching my documentary on Christian Monterola, the head chef of Hillsong Church. I hope you enjoy, and most of all, thank you so much, Grace, for letting me film your story. All the chefs do the same thing. They hate cooking at the end of the day. What are you doing? Let's go to McDonald's, a Big Mac. Let's go. Let's live like that. <laughs> I was born in Modugno, a very small town in the south of Italy. My father was a pastor and then he opened a pizzeria. Since the age of seven, we've spent a summer in the restaurant. In 2009, I decided to have an experience in London. It was a Michelin star restaurant in Marlow. That's where I really fell in love with this job and this profession. But life was a bit too crazy for a married couple. We decided to go back to Italy. I was working in my father's restaurant, Pizzeria. One day, my dad said to me, Chris, why don't you take Maggie and go to, to Australia? My dream was always to come and do college. So we left everything. All of a sudden, just had a cancer passed away and uh, it was a big of a shock. Even though he had a rest and I could have been there helping him, he wanted me to be here. He was very passionate about not just the food, but he was passionate about people. Many times when we were cooking, he would stop and uh, see someone that he knew and just go and say something nice to them and all of a sudden you will see this person crying and then he praying over her and the food burning. What I do today is doing amazing food in a church. We're trying to connect people with people. When it's a tough day, I actually try to look back and say, oh, that's why we do what we do. That's where I got it from. It's in me. A friend of mine said to me, Chris, we have something that was called the banquet table. Can you help us a Sunday night? We're selling food. I said, yeah, sure. That's where I met Pastor Sam DeMauro. His great passion is to actually helping people connect with people. To actually be able to work for church. You know, it was a blessing from God. We started a new thing, which was the pizza. We were just trying to create and to help this sense of community. From there, things just grown. Elevating the excellence of the food. We want that to be at the same standards of everything else that we do at the church. Last year, before the end of the year, we actually purchased our first food trailer. I always want people to feel like it's the first day we opened. The beautiful part is that there is a lot of business people asking, can we buy food from here? And we say, yeah, it's, it's for everyone. It's, you're welcome. The why behind the what is the most important thing. My job is actually to reflect the church and now see through what I do, which is cooking. Hey guys, I'm Natasha and I'd love to take a moment to introduce my documentary to you called Remembrance. This is a testimony shared by Odette Gavin who shares about her life as well as her very first colour conference experience. It's been a great honour and privilege to be able to film and direct this. So wherever this video might find you, I pray that it brings a little hope into your day. Be blessed guys and thanks for watching. I've been a mum uh, on two occasions, so to Brittany, who was my eldest daughter, who we lost in a car accident at the age of five, which was a, the most traumatic thing that we could ever have gone through as a family. 
And then we were blessed a couple of months later with Taylor. Taylor is part of our world now and means so much to us. Coming from a Catholic background, everything is very solemn. And whereas when you go into, um, especially the color conference, it's come as you are. And that's the one thing that I love about it. And having been blessed with the ticket, something just said to me, you got to give this a go. I was ushered into a seat that had two wonderful ladies there who were from South Africa. And we spoke about how in the beginning, the first day of how this conference is going to change your life. And initially when they said that, how is this going to change my life? But at the end, I could actually see how this was going to change my life. Having our family gone through such tragedy, having lost uh, a, a brother um, when he was 19 and then seven years later, a sister and then another seven years later, a niece and then my daughter. I felt God speaking to me then and saying, that's it your families are going to be blessed. Your family is going to be blessed. Leanne's message around fear and anxiety just resonated and I felt that I needed to hear that because that was really worrying me and pulling me down. I felt that that message was, don't worry, I am with you. I'm gonna help you and your family through this. I think I started scheduling a prayer meeting via Zoom, which is connecting with our families, praying with our families in South Africa, in, a, in Melbourne and in Sydney. Take me to the river, I wanna know. can speak to you in your heart and by listening to him how that can actually manifest and grow so having got those messages from Hillsong and I feel if I continue on with this and particularly with our family prayer meeting how would that how could that grow you know it makes me think about that I'm awakening in my faith I pray every day that I stay on the path that I am and be more like Jesus um, because I want, that's what I want from my life now. Mum, I love you. You are the best mum I could ever have and I know that God put you in my life for a reason and I know that we were just meant to be mother and daughter and every day I thank um, God that you're in my life and I am so so proud to be your daughter. Love you mum, you're the best. <laughs> Hi, my name is Erina. I am a second first, and you're gonna watch my documentary about Sophie Daniels and just her life. So yeah, enjoy it. Third year 2017, I like to describe that year as ridiculous. <laughs> my one word for it. So in the second week of third, third year, I ended up in hospital. I'd been feeling pretty unwell, and it got worse and worse. And I went into hospital, and I didn't come out for 25 days. So when I was in hospital, they diagnosed me with MS. Before that, very healthy. It was a very sudden onset and very severe as well. They did a lot of brain scans and things to work out what was going on because they realized it was neurological. And while they were there, they found something else in my brain. It's called an AVM and it's a clump of veins and arteries are clumped together like this and they shouldn't be, they should kind of sit a bit more like that. Um, and when they clump together, that the way the blood flows through them can weaken the vessel walls and there's the risk that they'll hemorrhage. I think I was probably slightly horrified that I had this thing because I didn't know that much about it, but what I knew wasn't great. So they said, well, now you know about it, you should probably deal with it. And I opted for brain surgery. Three, four days after surgery, like my fingertips, I started to be able to do this. And I just thought, well, if that's happening, the rest of my body, you know, the rest of my left hand side will follow. 
And then after about a week, I was like, oh, my foot's still not moving. And that's when they were like, yep, you'll be in rehab for some time. I ended up in rehab hospital for seven and a half weeks to actually get me functioning and able to move. And the movement did come back in my leg and in my arm. And they got to the point where they're like, you're safe to go home now. But I actually had to relearn how to walk, which is a really bizarre experience and very frustrating as well. God's been very kind in the way that MS for me isn't a big deal in my life, actually. And up until this day, I think it is more trusting him. And I think it's knowing that he is trustworthy. And I believe he spoke to me about that while I was in hospital. I just had this image of a puzzle piece. And like actually God was dropping, every now and then I'd get like one piece, but it wasn't making much sense. And I think he just gave me the idea that it's a puzzle in that it will come together. And it was a really reassuring thing because it was like, I can calm down. <laughs> I can rest, I can kind of receive each puzzle piece or note it down and know that God will put it together. And that's why I'm grateful because I think what I've learned and makes me who I am today. I don't wish it upon anyone kind of want to be fixed now but at the same time there's so much in it that I've learned. I'm more at peace than I ever have been and that's an incredible thing to be able to say. Hi my name is Jacob Laser, and you're about to watch a documentary on Hudson Reed. So Hudson and I collaborated on this together over the past couple months and I hope you enjoy. Oh. <laughs> I don't think I'm there yet. I don't think there is a singular moment where you think you've made it. My art is always, what's my next step? What can I do next? How can I better from this? What can I try? But I think the closest I've gotten to that was my second art show where I was standing there, my friends are playing a song and I just was like, this is it, I'm doing it. I've made it essentially for that moment. I was like, I, this is what it's led up to and the, just releasing this into the world is, so satisfying. I grew up in Hong Kong. We moved there when I was five. I was born in Texas. My siblings and I were all adopted. And when we, when I was five, we moved to Hong Kong. I grew up there, went to different schools all around. It was very interesting. It was very fun. I, my family's been there about 18 years, so it's, I don't know, it's home for sure. I feel like a foreigner in the US, which is kind of funny. I think it was in 2013, my great grandfather passed away and he left behind his house and stuff and we cleaned it out and I found two cameras. And it turns out the film camera worked. And that's when I first started taking photos. Like I got a roll of film that summer. Yeah, it went from there. Like I always, tell people I'm a photographer or I'm an artist. Is that how people view me as just another photographer? Or is that something I can make into my own and actually stand out in? Just figuring out where I stood in the place of it all. When I take photos, I start by looking for things people might miss. I just look for small moments. Like, yeah, I look for like big grand moments. Like if there's an artist with flame machines, of course I want to catch the fire, like, hell yeah. So I like to focus on crowds sometimes. I like to shoot from the crowd because I get really involved with the people. I just pay attention to everything that's happening, even though my attention is always like, all over the place. I can't stand still for more than 10 minutes, but just capturing the small moments and looking at things people will miss. There are things I wouldn't know unless I was serving in church, like how to edit properly and like presets and how to make things look the way they look. Like when we get that, let's say extended worship time at church um, and people are like praying for other people, are you still trying to get the best photo of the stage or are you looking at what's happening around you. Yeah, this whole thing I've been doing recently with all these faces, I don't know, it started because I have in my journal this one drawing of a face I did. Um, 
with my eyes closed I was like that pretty much and I saw it and I was like I kind of want to do that again so I got a piece of paper and tried it out and I've just been doing that ever since like I've been going live a bunch of days just because I'm not really trying to care about people watching or not like I get like two people who stay on the whole stream max but I just want people to like hop on and be like oh I'm inspired to make something so I'm gonna go do something or if they're like really stressed they can watch my stream and just chill out with me while I paint or draw something you know what do you hope that this documentary says overall I hope this just inspires people to get out there and do stuff don't be afraid challenge yourself and put out what you like Hello everyone, my name is Natalia, I'm from Poland, I'm doing my second year right now in film and TV stream in Hillsong College and this is a documentary that I created this year during this crazy pandemic season with my dear friend and housemate Alyssa and I really hope you guys are gonna enjoy her story. I wrote my first song when I was eight years old and I was literally just sitting in my room and it was just like a thought. It was like, I want to write a song. And so I did. My inspiration comes from just different artists. I just pull from people that are soulful and people who genuinely love to write music and write their own music. I would say my style is, I want to say it has a lot of soul, but I don't like to put stuff myself in a genre. Knowing that I need to write a song is like, it is usually when I'm going through something or when I've gone through something and I'm like, hmm, maybe a good way to reflect about that isn't necessarily me doing like all the journaling, but it's maybe the writing. One thing really cool that a songwriter can do is they can manipulate the sounds that the person is hearing. Basically, you are hearing what I want you to hear. I think that's really fun because sometimes I want people to feel how I feel and sometimes it's hard to express it through words, but I can do that with music. I want to know how high, how deep, how wide is love. Growing up, I think my dad honed in on that and immediately realized, like, this is her gift. And so he kind of helped navigate where I am. And since then, I've just been growing and trying to nurture my craft the best way I can. If I were talking to eight-year-old me, I'd say one, stop being so fearful. Fearful of not succeeding, but fear of being successful. And how great is your grace? I never forget all you've done. How deep is your love? As I journey through life, I put all your statutes to music. They become the theme of my joyous songs. Hey everyone, my name is Jackson Weeb and this is my short documentary. Enjoy. Around 1.15 in the morning, she was woken up by God to pray for my protection, and she had no idea why. That's when I would finally start to pay attention. I know there's a God, but I don't know if he really exists. There's something to this God, but I, I'm still enjoying myself way too much. I was always pursuing more and trying to just keep leveling up, if you will. I had already started tinkering with steroids and stuff like that and started getting into more of the party scene. You know, more nights of drinking, more nights of pills and, and whatnot, just to get from one high to the next. I ended up being asked to partake in Mr. Ecuador USA competition, and I ended up doing it, of course. After I won the competition, I met this other gentleman uh, from Ecuador and he was a contestant. He ended up telling me he was a Christian and I didn't think much of it at the time. He had asked for my keys earlier in the night. You know, that night of the competition, I'd had a few drinks. Friends just jumped into my car. I ended up on top of someone's lap on the back. I just 
just didn't know exactly what happened. I woke up with my, my body hanging half out of the car and half in the car. And I'd realized that the two girls that were sitting there had been launched out of the car, they'd been ejected. Now it hit me, the severity of the accident. I put myself in that position. I say, well, what if I was driving? It would be an impact head on. I remember my trainer coming out of his car with his wife and creating this barrier around the actual car. He had told me later on um, that the only reason he was following me that night was because he felt compelled by God to follow me. That, that same night of the accident, another friend of mine, she tells me around 1.15 in the morning, she was woken up by God to pray for my protection. She had no idea why. Once she had told me that, that's when I would finally start to pay attention. It took a few different people that God would use to have me understand that he's been in my life the whole time working for me and not against me. Finally, it hit me that God was real. There, there, was, there was an actual God that loves us so deeply that we should be doing everything we can to glorify him and to praise him for, for always being there for us. He's the showcase, not me. Wow, Toby and Erina, thank you so much for introducing your intakes documentaries. They were truly incredible. What do you think, Paula? I think they were beautiful, beautiful stories and beautiful shots. Absolutely, inspirational and moving. And now the story continues. Well, it's, our, it's the end for us, right? That's true. Although the story continues, it is coming to its end for us at least, except for third year. Do third year. What would you say this, this season has held for you, Paula? I think this season has been an amazing season for like pushing yourself and understanding that you can do anything if you put like effort and you do it from the heart. And I feel that God is the center of everything that you do, right? 100%. I would say that there have been a lot of blood, sweat, and tears that have been poured out into this, not only for the second seconds, but for every intake that has been in this, involved in this. And we are so thankful because we could not have done any of the work that we've put in without them and our trainers. So we hope you enjoy uh, these final semester films from us. And we, we look forward to seeing you after the show around some popcorn. And I don't really want to say that, but yeah. You can grab popcorn. Yeah, you can have some popcorn if you want. Thank you for tuning in and enjoy the rest of the show. Enjoy. Hi, my name is Nathan Carroll and my film is titled Ibu dan Ana, which is an Indonesian translation for mother and daughter. This film revolves around a young girl who pursues her dream of becoming a filmmaker, trading in her life in suburbia for a life in New York. And this short film in particular is the climactic argument scene that takes place in the full length screenplay. So I hope you enjoy this sneak peek into the longer form project. Ma? Hmm? How would you feel if I went to film school? Dimana? In New York? I met with some friends the other day, and uh, my friend's brother, he actually studies in New York, and he made a lot of connections. I really think I need to be there. Yeah, tapi kamu kan bisa bikin project filmmu waktu uni break di sini. Um, it's not the same. Can you help me set the table, please? Yeah. Uh, one yang bawah. Uh, mungkin kamu bisa ketemu sama Om Johnny. 
Dia kan videografer di gereja kita. Mama bisa kenalin kamu sama dia. Om Joni makes videos for coffee shops. It's it's different. I want to make something I want to make something good, you know? Kamu tahu nggak sih gimana situasi Amerika saat ini? Tante Lina have a chat kemarin sama mama, terus dia bilang hampir tiap hari anaknya tuh lihat demo di depan rumahnya dia. Tante Lina freaks out over every little thing. Then he gets a paper cut, she freaks out. I'll be just fine. It doesn't matter anyway. I'm leaving in a month. Why you didn't tell about this sooner? Because would you have let me? Would you really? At least kita bisa discuss tentang ini. <laughs> you always do this. You always treat me like a kid. You, I haven't had a day where you haven't patronized me. Has it ever occurred to you that I actually know what Selama I want? Selama kamu kurang ajar seperti ini, I will treat you like a kid. Ya, I knew mama you were gonna masa, say that. Selama mama masih kasih kamu uang jajan, kasih kamu uang sekolah, masih kasih kamu uang untuk jalan-jalan sama temenmu. I will make kamu... my own money. I can take care of myself. Hi everybody, I'm Jordan. <laughs> That's Paula. That's Charlie. Enjoy my film. <laughs> Have a uh, latte extra shot? Sure. This will have to be takeaway due to COVID. Is that all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's fine. Yeah. Sorry about that.
Hi, my name is Maria Paula Ospina. I'm from Second Second and my film is called Amelia. It's a love story, so I hope you enjoy it and yeah, watch it. Te quiero. Te quiero en la mañana. A las doce del día. Cuando el sol toca mi pie. Pero a las tres a las cuatro cuando me pongo a pensar en los otros dos en los momentos que ya no tengo me pongo a odiarte con la mitad del odio que guardo para mí. Y trato de recordarte. Y luego, vuelvo a quererte. Cuando me acuesto y recuerdo que estabas hecho para mí, que de alguna forma me lo dicen mis rodillas, mis dedos, el universo. Y todo desaparece en un instante.
me preocupo olvidarte. Me da miedo. Hi guys, you're about to watch my video. Make sure to get a good pair of headphones. And here's my friend Sari. <laughs> Enjoy. Hey y'all, my name is Austin Gerland and you're about to watch my short film, Second Chance. I hope it gives you a glimmer of hope in this season. Enjoy. I know, Mom. I'm doing my best to get you out closer to me. I miss having you around more. I, I try to come by this weekend. Okay. Don't forget the paper. 
I won't. I love you. Love you too. I am successful in whatever I do. I am successful in whatever I do. I am happy. I am enough. I am successful. to inform you that due to the COVID-19 pandemic, you will be laid off effective immediately. Dear future David, how are you? What's life like in the future? Are you famous yet? I had my school play this month and Mrs. Jacobs said I was very professional. I hope all of your dreams are coming true, but if not, don't give up because they are my dreams too. Life gets hard sometimes, but that's okay because the hard times make us stronger. I almost didn't even act in the play because Billy, Andrew, and Johnny bullied me for wanting to act. I almost believed them that I was a loser. But one thing I learned this year is that you shouldn't stop believing in yourself, no matter what. Life will get better and God will get you through it. Things are much better now. I'm glad I acted and I'm glad I got stronger. I made new friends and I don't think I'm a loser anymore. I actually really like riding. Maybe I could do that when I'm a grown up. Do you still write? Anyway, I can't wait to be you. Peace, David.
What an amazing showcase we've seen. Absolutely. 2020 has been a crazy year, but it was amazing to see what our film and TV students have put together this year. As the film and TV stream coordinator, I want to congratulate each and every one of our students for such an amazing effort in this season. Thank you, Rob, but none of that would have been possible if it weren't for our film and TV stream trainers. They have come alongside us throughout the semester to really help us put these films together, and we are forever grateful. Thank you, Rob. And to you online, thank you for watching. Thanks for all your comments and all your support this semester. We really hope that you've enjoyed everything as much as we have, and we look forward to seeing you next semester. Take care. Welcome, welcome. Crumpeting. It's like crumpeting. Crumpeting.